Hello, and welcome to Weekly Dev Tips. I'm Steve Smith, a.k.a. R. Dallas. This is episode 16, where we'll talk about becoming a T-shaped developer. Don't forget you can follow Weekly Dev Tips on Twitter, as well as in your favorite podcast app. And if you're finding these tips to be helpful, please take a moment to leave a review on iTunes or Stitcher. I'd really appreciate it. This episode is sponsored by DevIQ. DevIQ offers online training for software developers and designers covering topics like UX, .NET development, and my own course on ASP.NET Core. Check them out at deviq.com. In this episode, I'm going to talk about what it means to be a T-shaped developer. But before we get into that, let's talk a little bit about how software developers typically market themselves and how companies post job openings using some real data and numbers. Let's consider a pretty common but vague job description, web developer. Let's search for jobs using this term on a few different sites. We'll leave location out of the search. Remote work is becoming increasingly acceptable, and it's just easier to compare numbers if we don't restrict by location. Looking at Indeed.com, there are 40,000 jobs matching this search string. LinkedIn's job search has over 14,000. Glassdoor finds 110,000. Monster.com will only tell us there were over 1,000 results found, but it's a good guess it was a lot more than 1,000. The point is, there are a huge number of positions out there that match the search term or exact job title of web developer. If you identify primarily as simply a web developer, you're in a crowd of hundreds of thousands. The good news is, there's definitely demand for people to fill that kind of role. The bad news is, how do you convince a particular client that you're the best candidate for their web developer vacancy if that's as far as you've gone in differentiating yourself? When you're marketing a product, one that isn't creating a brand new market segment, it can be useful to identify how big the market for that kind of product is. Say you're looking to enter the footwear business. It's good to know that there are billions of dollars spent by millions of customers on footwear every year. However, when you go to actually sell your footwear, you're probably not going to try to market it to people who buy shoes. You're going to niche down to a particular segment. Maybe basketball playing teens who aspire to be NBA players. Maybe outdoor fanatics who want the best hiking shoes. Maybe fashion-conscious women who will pay a premium for comfort. You'll sell more shoes by appealing to specific demographics of buyers than by trying to appeal broadly to any shoe purchaser. People can only remember one or two leaders in a given market niche, and as a marketer, you want your product to occupy one of those positions. If you can't be the number one or number two for the market, you need to pick a smaller, more focused market in which you can occupy that number one or number two position. Think about it for automobile companies. What's the most successful automobile company? In my opinion, there's not even a clear winner here. What if we narrow it down to trucks? Many of you would probably say Ford or Chevrolet. How about electric cars? I would argue Tesla has done an excellent job of being first in mind as the electric car manufacturer, even though last year Nissan sold more electric vehicles globally than did Tesla. So as a developer, remember that you are the product you're trying to sell. You have a set of skills and experience that you can bring to bear when presented with a problem. There are a wide number of skills that most developers need to know, but don't need to be expert in. Visualize a horizontal line representing the breadth of skills you have. Now, make that line thicker at the bottom by a few units to represent the relatively shallow depth of knowledge that you have for most skills. You work with source control, but you're not known throughout the industry for your source control skills. You can apply CSS to HTML, but you're not writing books about how to apply CSS to HTML. You're competent with c -sharp or JavaScript or PHP, but again, you're not a well-known expert in them. Now think about a particular skill or passion you have that goes beyond mere competence. Maybe you could have a podcast all about your Git knowledge and the dark arts of mastering its intricacies. Maybe you could write a book about the most powerful ways to use CSS selectors to achieve amazing results. Whole programming language might be tough to become well-known for, Think John Skeet for C-sharp as an example. But you could position yourself as the go-to expert in lambda expressions or arrow functions or a particular design pattern. Whatever skill you already have or could have, that's where you're going to go deep with your knowledge. Visualize that thick horizontal line representing your shallow knowledge of a wide variety of topics and now draw a much deeper vertical line dropping down from its center, forming a T-shape. This T-shape represents your ideal skill set or at least how you'd like to market that skill set. The T-shaped developer has greater success because they're able to position themselves in the minds of customers, managers, and peers 
as experts in a particular niche. How you choose your niche and how you make sure others are aware of your expertise will have to wait for future shows. Please leave a comment at weeklydevtips.com slash 016 if you have questions or ideas that you'd like to share. That's it for this week. Thanks for listening and see you next time on weeklydevtips.com.